Okay. Okay, OG. So, um, man, I, I know we, um, we done did so many stories, man, on the wreck yard and, and fighting and things like that, man. Uh -huh. And I really want to know, man, um, and a lot of fans want to know, too. Who really got your hand just, I mean, all the way, we know we the King Kong. I know you, you don't, you don't ran those down through there, man, but who, who you say just had your hands outstanding, though? Who got you all the way right? Before you hit Ferguson unit. Before? Before, before? Even when you got to Ferguson unit. Okay. Well, before I hit Ferguson unit, man, listen, y'all, uh, I always ran into a lot of niggas. I always wanted, you know, I, I was fighting, and I was always scared to just get punished the way I fight niggas. You know what I'm saying? I used to always say, damn, I don't want nobody to do me like I be doing mm. them niggas. Gotcha. I'm talking about, cause I be going, you know, my job is just to fuck the face up. I just want to knock a nigga face up. That's all I used to do. <laughs> I don't know why. But um, it wasn't for the knockout. It was just to get in there and, and fuck up the face. Right. Um. Uh, I always thought one day somebody was gonna do me like I did them. I always thought that. I always, I always had, you know, feeling nigga gonna fuck my face up one day. I done fuck some faces up. I done fuck some faces up. Uh. But I ran into a lot of cats, man. A lot of cats that I paid attention to because I just wanted to learn what them niggas knew. I, I used to look at a lot of people, man. I'm talking about. My first boxing coach, shout out Tales from a Crip, man. Tales from a Crip. My first boxing coach was Don Wayne, man. <coughs> Nigga on the street. Um, down here in Fort Worth, man, we ain't got no gyms. We ain't got gyms. And it's a shame, you know, back in the day, you know, a nigga hustle, you know, clean hustles. Real good clean hustles. And niggas that was entrepreneur hustles back in the day, you had niggas that sold weed. You know, niggas sold weed. Everybody thought they was the shit. The weed, man. You know, it's the weed, man. Nigga, we ain't shit. But you had niggas that had other hustles that didn't fuck you no know, legal hustles. And guess what these niggas do? You'll walk by, you'll walk down the street one day, you'll see a whole nigga outside with a motherfucking white suit on, with a karate belt on this shit. And he had about like five or six young niggas sitting in the front yard. Yeah. On a motherfucking on a motherfucking um, on, on a um, a pad, a padded or whatever the motherfucking thing is. And they be at the, he be at the, huh, 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 huh. No, they ain't wear this nigga don't know no motherfucking karate. This nigga don't know, this nigga got a brown belt on. What the fuck is a brown belt? <laughs> well, you got green, brown, yellow. Okay, what a brown, what brown mean? I mean, you almost good? Shit, nigga, you good or not? What, how, how far you gotta go to get to the black? I'm, I'm one thing I'm surprised, I'm happy for, I'm happy for, that niggas finally got some recognition in something, you dig what I'm saying, that, that's at the top of the fucking food chart. But hell, they don't even play that sport, they don't play that, that sport on TV that much like football. Yeah. A black belt. Boy. A black belt. Nigga, nigga can be a black belt, you know that, a white boy gotta say he a black belt. I know that hurt back in the days, the Ku Klux Klan days. What are you? Now I got that B belt. That who? That B belt. B belt. Nigga, what, 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 color, what kind of belt you got? The nigger belt. I got the nigger belt. Shit, you know what I'm saying? They don't want to say black got the black belt or nothing, goddamn it. But anyway, man, nigga. I you know, you walk down the street, you find a nigga that just wanted to know back then. And that was when niggas had they, you know, without the internet shit, you know, you know, parents had to trust that these niggas knew what the fuck they was doing. Right. And right. I guess, you know, I guess then they try to probably charge ten dollars a week or something, you know, do the little kids teach the little boy karate, discipline. Everything that go with the karate skills. This is for BC. This this is B this is the BC time. This is before crack. Before crack. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, nigga would be boxing. So one day, nigga, I'm coming down the street now, and I see a nigga with some boxing gloves, old man, around his motherfucking neck. My first boxing coach ever was my daddy. 
And me and my brothers, we walking home from school. Daddy was sitting in the front yard, sitting on the back of the car. We, and he had the boxing gloves on. And we was just happy to see some motherfucking boxing gloves. Right. You now kids do. They see a basketball, basketball go, bicycle. It's boxing gloves. Oh, shit. We seen that shit on TV. Huh? The, the Muhammad Ali. The, yeah, yeah. Well, daddy's going to put y'all motherfucking ass in training right then. So I never forget, man, daddy put the gloves on our hand. He put them on my big brother first, AD. <laughs> I don't know why, man. You know, uh, but he put them on AD first. Um. Uh, my dad, my daddy, the next, the next move was the most shocking move we ever seen. Daddy yelled down the street and called the boys down the street. Now, my thing about the boys down the street, all them niggas older than we are, daddy. Mm. Yeah. All of them older than we are. They said, hey, 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 y'all, y'all come here for a minute. Daddy asked her a little bit, you know, put the box of love on me, see what my son got. Now, AD, he just wasn't no, you know, you know, he didn't have it, you know, he wasn't cold yet. He wasn't near cold. Yeah. Shit, we still kids. And daddy made us fight the big boys down the street. I said, that's some bullshit right there, daddy. I'm talking to you, nigga. about 13, 12, and shit. Here we are, seven, eight years old. Little nigga. After fending for ourselves, really. Daddy didn't give a fuck. But daddy was teaching us what to do as we went along. Daddy always taught us how to shoot our jab, how to throw, do. But you know, daddy, she, daddy had a problem uh, with his training methods. Right. You know, see, daddy, you know, daddy always wanted to teach. You know, my daddy old school. And I don't know what, I think that's all the niggas that come from the service. I think all you niggas that come from the service around about this time in the, um, around 68, 68 you know, early 70s. All you niggas want y'all to do some, some judo in your motherfucking boxing. <laughs> Where you niggas do that at? You niggas, and then y'all don't even want to call it what the white folks call it karate, nigga. Oh, I know judo. What the fuck is judo? Judo? My thing is this, what's the motherfucking difference? Yeah. Self-defense, nigga. <laughs> I know what. I want to see what the difference is between judo and karate. Shit, they didn't make judo sound like it's colder than karate. You know, if you know, that nigga know judo though. What the fuck that mean? <laughs> now, 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 now they got down to jujitsu, whatever they call it. Yeah. This nigga, a jitsu, whatever that word is, that's what yeah. I said. Jujitsu. <laughs> that, that, that part, what he said. What Diamond said. J my mouth can't, I can't, my, my Z's don't come out right. I got a tooth missing. <laughs> my jujitsu don't come out right. <laughs> But anyway, say, but niggas always try to make they shit sound harder than that. I mean, I got, I, I got, I'm, I got, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a brown belt in karate. Well, I'm an orange belt. Well, hell, I don't know, I'm, I don't know what, nothing, what the colors. The mean. rankings. Yeah, you know the rankings. rankings. Yeah, private. Yeah. Sergeant, lieutenant, captain, or major. What are you? Shit. You need to find out what them belts mean. What them colors? Yeah. And in they order. But see, I don't know nothing about no colors. But anyway, you niggas that came from the service way back in them days, y'all come on trying to teach niggas how to box and throw judo with the shit. I was just, I ain't, man, fuck that. Where I'm from, you throw your feet out the ground, somebody gonna sleep your motherfucking ass. I don't give a damn what y'all say, nigga. You run to the right knee, ain't no hands faster, ain't no feet faster than the hands. Ain't no feet, but I seen some fast feet. I seen some quick feet. I seen some happy feet. Right. Daddy would, my daddy would make us fight the niggas down the street. That was my first boxing lesson. My second boxing lesson, dumb. Right. I went to Coast Lawson. Shout out to Coast Lawson, man. And Dunbar. Dunbar Middle School, man. Uh, my, my stepdad, I guess, when my stepdaddy found out we supposed to be some bad boys, you know, my mom, you know, remarried and shit, you know. My stepdad, he used to look at us, man. There's some bad ass boys. She said, well, I don't see how bad this. That nigga took us to boxing practice. I went to boxing at um, Dunbar Middle School. It was Dunbar 6th, 7th, 8th grade at that time. And, um, like always, um, my big brother got in the gloves first. <laughs> my big brother fought one of the coldest niggas out of Stop 6 Project. His name was Scatty. Shout out to Scatty. Everybody from Stop 6 Project know who Scatty is. Um, 
My big brother didn't win that fight. <laughs> right. Now, you nigga with trained boxers, nigga, we was just, we, this is our first day up there fucking around with you nigga. My stepdad just bringing us, you know, and rolled us. You know how the coaches do, let's see what they got then. Let's see, let's see if they know what they're doing. Well, evidently we didn't. Well, they did. I boxed a nigga and I knocked his ass into the motherfucking heater. I slept a nigga, I, I slept, I slept a little mess and I fought. I knocked him right into the heater. I brushed him like I was, hell, I just seen my brother get his ass towed up. Shit, I'll be damned. Nigga scared me. Yeah. I thought they gonna do me. I just, I fought for my motherfucking life. And I, by the time I opened my eyes, mm. I was winning. Yeah. Shit, that nigga had ran into the hot water heater. But anyway, man, um, as time went on, man, say, uh, as my life started to evolve, man, I, I, we didn't have gyms in folk work. We don't got boxing gyms where you can go practice and shit, nigga. Uh, you run into a fight on the street, nigga, you fade who you run into. These niggas out here knock your motherfucking ass out. Some of these niggas know judo. <laughs> Some of these niggas know judo. I, mean, I just sound I just sound good. <laughs> judo. I, I wouldn't know judo if I seen it. Here, I know you better you better have some. That's all I know. <laughs> you know that fucking around. Judo, yeah. jiu-jitsu. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, taekwondo. Well, all, all that new shit. Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Uh, Br- Brazilian. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Forget you. Yeah, that part. But anyway, um, I always learned how to teach myself, y'all. I'm not going to even lie to y'all. I had I ran into a lot of people, but I learned one thing: if you don't practice on your own, teach you how to teach yourself. I had to teach myself how to leave with my left. Leave my left. I'm right handed. I didn't know how to throw my left and leave my left. I know my left is supposed to be the, it's like the sternum wheel to the car. You understand set, me? Set them yeah. up. Yes, just to set them up, just to put the nigga in, in motion. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how to stir that car. So I learned how to work that wood grain wheel. And then come with the, yeah, come with that other bad motherfucker. But um, I always learned the power in the street. You know, sometimes I learned it. I had a rush game. I used to like the rush niggas. Yeah. I learned that off my homeboy Dre Day. R.I.P. to Dre Day, man. R.I.P. to the King Dre Day, man. The rush king. The rush king. Uh, he taught me that when I was a young nigga, and that was my style of fighting, was the rushing nigga. But the, but the thing about rushing is uh, it spooks nigga. Uh, it takes them off their guard if they don't know what's going on when you get there. Uh, your job in the rush game is to know what to do when you get there. You understand me? And that's to stay active, stay working. When you run up in rushing, one thing about a rush thing, a nigga always panicking, you know, try to figure out, yeah, cause you running up on him real quick. By the time I had a, I had a nice rush game, that's the first thing I mastered was the rush game. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I ran into a lot of more color niggas with hand. After that, man, I ran into a nigga in jug color. And, and I didn't know why they called him that. They called him penitentiary. Penitentiary. He had to watch Penitentiary. Now, when I seen this nigga, when I say now that I'm older, and I remember the nigga named Penitentiary, that nigga was a squirrel, business product of the Penitentiary. And they had, you know, I don't know, I don't know why, but um, a lot of niggas that came home in the '80s and around that time, man, I always had yeah. a goddamn tooth missing. Think that? You niggas always had a trope. Somebody, man, I ain't gonna lie, man. There's a lot of niggas from the 80s, they motherfucking tooth missing in the front. Yeah. I seen a nigga hitting them out with a basketball. But I ain't never seen that man. I ain't seen so many niggas with, with no teeth in their motherfucking mouth. And, and you can tell the fight, you can tell it's the fight. They all got the same Leon Spinks looking in their motherfucking mouth. Everybody know who Leon Spinks is. Leon Spinks is a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Leon, Leon Spinks had the baddest gap in the world. He smiled, that motherfucker, he can stick two, two fangs in his motherfucking mouth. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nah, Leon Spinks, the biggest gap in the world, man. But anyway, man, that's how them niggas look down on, on the unit. All the niggas came home, all the niggas didn't have no motherfucking teeth in my mouth. That was my biggest fear. My biggest fear was to go down to the penitentiary and let a nigga knock my motherfucking teeth out. Then that's, and then I told myself, in order to do that, you can't do too much fighting. Hmm. 
Shit. In order to do that, nigga, I gotta make sure I gotta keep my guard. Guard your grill, nigga. That, that's a real saying. Guard your grill. Guard your grill. Goddamn right. Guard this motherfucker. Keep that motherfucker. Guard this. Yeah. Guard your grill. Guard your motherfucking grill. Them niggas down there was going for trophies. They knock your goddamn teeth out your mouth, nigga, and, and go in there and, and have a spread on that motherfucker. And have your tooth sitting up on that motherfucker like it's a birthday cake. Nigga, they knock your motherfucking teeth out. Then you got to go around and mumble talk all motherfucking week. Because you don't want niggas to see that. You know what I mean? That ain't shit. Let me tell you, that ain't shit. <laughs> they be like, what's wrong? Shit, you know what I mean? Shit, nigga, what up? You good? No, oh, hell yeah, nigga. This shit ain't shit, nigga. You can tell they got them lips stuck to the side like that. Look like nigga got them good. Hit off some dope or something. Yeah. Trying to hide that they ain't got they front motherfucking tooth and fell out. Nigga, they're not goddamn. Oh, you know you ain't got no tooth, bro. And it'll slip. A nigga will be talking, he act and say something. He'll look, you be like, God damn. You know, and then a real nigga ain't gonna say nothing about the tooth being gone. He just gonna act like he didn't see it. That's me. <laughs> That's my game. That yeah, nigga tooth gone. I said, knock this man tooth out, God damn. Yeah. Uh, man. That's what I'm saying in my head the whole time. But I'm looking out about a nigga talking. Nigga tooth gone. I mean, nigga shit ass is gone. Damn, dude. I know nigga say man, so therefore, I try to learn my skills off everybody I ran into that had some with their hand. But penitentiary, this motherfucker was in job code. This motherfucker was big. This nigga fit the description of a penitentiary nigga. This nigga was big on the top and then he had chicken legs. That nigga had two two pick two two picks for legs, man. That nigga <laughs> man was little than a motherfucker. But that nigga tight butt and that nigga go out and work out in the gym and put this big ass leather belt around his motherfucking waist and tie that bitch up. When he go out there and work out, he be squeezing like, squeeze the shit out that nigga waist. That nigga walking around that motherfucking man, you know what I'm saying? You know how you nigga be doing when y'all think, you know, y'all did about a hundred some push ups and shit. Right. And that nigga got these little spinny legs. But they used to call a nigga penitentiary. That was his name in Job Co., McKinney Job Co. Yeah. Uh, I ain't never been to the penitentiary yet. You know, I ain't, but, you know, I ain't really know what niggas about let, to do. Let me ask you a question. Well, so, wait, 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 I don't want to get off topic, though. But well, like when you see niggas like that though, like, cause you know we, when niggas go to the gym, they be mm -hmm. working out and they see other big, big guys, big niggas. You know what I'm saying? They they get this this thing hit them like they don't want to go work out by them. Did, did, did you did you had it? Was you uh, discouraged by working working out uh, with big niggas or working working I out mean, around big niggas? Big niggas always said I was a built nigga. Mm, cause you been working out all your life though. Uh. Because of the frame of my body, and you know, you know how my daddy, you know, they, they, they man, they gonna be big enough for he keep doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a tip. You know what I'm saying? Um, my daddy always said we was built. Yeah. My ain't, my ain't them. My ain't them. They, they let us know as we deal, little kids. Oh, we got some fine little nephew. Look at him, little built self. We be looking like man. You know, they type of chest that little Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigga, they didn't say something. They seen something else we didn't even know. Y'all didn't know. Was. Yeah. Shit, we didn't know we started hitting weights, nigga. We sure we gonna get right. I ain't know nothing about that. I just seen it. Um, I don't think it got me right, man. I was, um, my mom used to go in, um, Skaggs, Apple Bates, man, little old, um, grocery store. And when you walk in, they had the magazine section right there. When you walk by, you see the men up there with the bodybuilding shit going on. Yeah. Or doing something like that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? The Joe Weeders or something, goddamn. You be like, God damn, nigga, that big. And I was always looking. You always wanted to be like it. See, we gonna get big like that. They kept saying we were built, but that shit don't look like that. And then we seen the Incredible Hulk do the most famous move in the world. Oh, oh man, we went in the mirror. I went in the mirror one day and I did it, and I seen I had the muscles up there. I said, God damn, I said, look at mine. I got the incredible work muscle. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And that shit was real. Yeah. Without the work in that, that shit was already there. Yeah. And then my little brother, he'll do it. Uh, we always want, we want our shit to be big right here on the show. Big traps. But anyway, penitentiary called me inside the um. I was in the room one day, and you tell these niggas crazy and a motherfucker, man. And um, when I got inside there with this nigga, this nigga used to tell me, come on, you gonna work out with me? 
You know, I always, you know, I always thought I was big anyway. You know, I, you know, I, yeah, work out. And he said, yeah, you gonna work out with me today. You gonna work out with me today, so um, I went to the gym. Nigga, I worked out with paying attention here and there. Got in there and got my paper. Uh, got back to the, got back to the dorm, and paying attention wanted to do some punching. Well, I already knew I couldn't out punch the nigga. That nigga, that nigga paying attention. I ain't never been, nigga. I ain't never like 16 years old. Goddamn me going about to be 17 years now. We, we gonna do some punching? Ain't nobody gonna do no punching with you. Yeah. Where you gonna get a spawn for now? You, you. That nigga told me one that fucked me up. I'm talking about the nigga went for, the nigga went for the gusto and said, no, nah, nigga, you gonna do the punching with me. Hmm. I'm like, hell yeah, no, nah, nigga, I ain't gonna do no punching with you, nigga. But what Penitentiary didn't know, I told y'all, as a young kid, I came up fighting older niggas. Then I made up my mind real quick, I ain't doing no tripping. He said, just do me a favor. He said, I'm gonna hit you one good time, you hit me two hard times. He said, I want you to hit me hard as you can. Two times, I want you to fire for me hard. I'm gonna hit you, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna hit you back. I'm gonna get one, you get two. For you, every, every two you get, I'm gonna get one. I said, all right, I'll never forget. He said, you ready? He said, come on, get that. Like, that nigga, he a big and motherfucker, man. I hit the nigga like this, nigga gonna fire for me like I'm gonna set myself up. So, you know, I, I had to cheat. I didn't hit him too hard. And I didn't hit him too soft either. You hear me? So, I, you know, I. You know? Boy, that nigga fired off of me. Boom! I said, God damn. They hit me right in my shit hard in the motherfucker. I'm like, God damn. Nigga down there knocked him in. And they said, nigga said, don't feel on me, nigga. Don't feel on you, what you mean? And he said, I hit him too soft. <laughs> and he stuck his shit back, he said, now come on. I don't think I want to play this game. Yeah. I don't think I want to play, nigga. So I knew this time, shit. Man, fuck this nigga. Ah, boom, boom. And he said, yeah. And he just buried the tap. He said, yeah, come get you now. Ah, boom, boom. Said, yeah, yeah. Buried the tap. Ah, boom, boom. Boom, he be like, ooh, yeah, come on, come on. And he'll barely tap me back. Hmm. The harder I hit him, he, the softer he hit me. I'm telling you, I'll find out. I just knew in a minute this nigga just gone. I'm taking it there, you hear me? <laughs> nigga crumped me up, but pay attention. Work with me every day on job code like that. You know what to do, get me right. Get my body, he, he love get. Put that chest out there and let you file and get his shit tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what that shit was about. But but you did. But you remember one one one. I, I remember you were talking about um, you and Charity a couple. And Douglas. Yeah, trading some punches. But Charity you but Douglas. you said that. Yeah. Only reason why he wants you to punch on y'all punching yeah, to yeah. get his shit tight. Yeah, that's Charlie and Douglas. Yeah. Yeah, and that's way before I met him. Yeah, but yeah, that nigga would sit there and let you maybe me boxing boxing shit in, man. But um. When I was trading with penitentiary like that, uh, I never forget. Um, we had a ride on Job Co. It was a ride jumped off. Okay. You know? Yeah. You know? A ride broke out somewhere on the campus. And they had a thing, they had a thing that if a ride break out on the campus, the nigga gonna come ride on whatever dorm it break out on. So, um, I never get one nigga ran inside there with me and paying attention and said, uh, say man, they having a ride with the hundred wing. They on their way to triple O one. I was in triple O one. And it's one thing about them rides, when they say them, them niggas on their way over a hundred wing, the hundred wing can start at uh 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 101 all the way to 121. You know what I'm saying? 101 to 121. That's how many wings it is over there in the 100. But they said, in the 0001 is just one dorm. I said, who they getting the ride with? That nigga said, they got in the ride with the 100 wing. I said, the 100 wing? Which, which building? Ain't no telling. It's, yeah. it's, it's 120 wings over there. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from 100 to 120 over there. Anybody can be on their motherfucking way over here. Them niggas like to get together, too. Yeah, man, them niggas on their way, man. You know, you know, when they get getting 100 wings, there's a lot of niggas over there in our dorm, them niggas can't fight. I'm like, God damn. So, um, 
The last thing to be trying to find out what had happened, you better be trying to get ready because the niggas on their way. And there's one thing about the Job Corps, um, it's not ran by security staff, but they it's ran by people that's, that's, that's over the dorms. Right. And, but um, these niggas not armed and, and with bats or, 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 or pepper spray or no shit like that. He just regular niggas coming, they gotta break up a fight. The niggas are not stuck, can't no one man stop. 50 and 40 niggas when they on the way to fight 50 and 40 more niggas. Right. Then you just another nigga in the way. <laughs> so, um, they yelled out the 100 wieners on their way over there, man. I'm like, God damn, so everybody that shit. And I, I was standing by penitentiary. And penitentiary, you know, she, you know, she, this, this what he lived for. You know, yeah. he got, he, you know how they be doing? Them niggas be thinking they just goddamn be swole. There's two goddamn big niggas. You ready? Yeah, he got me pumped up. Nigga pumping me up. Yeah. So, you know, he, he, but, you know, really, I've been I've been working out with penitentiary. You know, me and penitentiary, we haven't punching him the hardest. He punching me the softest. You know what I'm saying? He, he giving me, man, he, he got me ready. I feel like he got me ready, shit. As long as I'm with penitentiary, I can fade the ride. We gonna go side to side. Nigga, like, get, get ready, man. Go in there and get your gloves. No, no, yeah, I work at gloves. Everybody work, get the work at gloves, got their work at gloves. And my dumb ass, I ran there and grabbed a work at gloves, and I put my belt around my waist, nigga, and I tied it up. I had my little tight belt, my little gym belt. Oh, he got to you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm on my penitentiary shit. Yeah, we, it's going down. Yeah, yeah. You understand me? And I'll be down. Here they come. It's the 100 wing. I mean, it, it had this goddamn, um, this white boy in the front. And I mean, he looked like he was on his motherfucking um, Harley Race shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When he was coming down that sidewalk, he was coming. So he, he coming like he got damn it. Ain't nothing gonna fucking stop him. And everybody looking at the white boy. He walking up to the door. And the white boy walked up to the door and tried to kick the door. He kicked the door. Boom. Boom. He kept trying to kick the door in. My like, God damn. He turned around. He walked off. When he came back around that corner, he had about like 12 motherfuckers with him. Then, then that, my boy Pantene said, man, fuck this shit. Come on, y'all, let's go. We ain't scared of these motherfuckers. We all sitting in the dorm trying to figure out who was fighting, because we wasn't fighting. As soon as that door opened, I was like, fuck it. OG person made his first uh, day for V. With the hands. With the hands. This is my first day for V ever in life. Right. The white boy was coming back up the sidewalk, and I decided to, you know, fuck it. Yeah, it took flight. I ran up, met the white boy halfway. God damn me! As soon as I got up there to him, I caught him. Bam! And I snapped him with a bad motherfucker. I'm talking about my first one hit a quitter ever. My first one ever one hit a quitter. Hell, I thought I was gonna just no beat. When I catch him, I'm talking about I put my hand out, right, boom, in the hole. It's so like the whole campus was outside. Mm. And the good part was the girl, the co eds was out there too. I just won. Yeah. Both ways. Goddamn me, um. But anyway, um, I walked out there and I catch him, man. I catch him with a pretty one. Right on the sidewalk and he fell like a tree, man. Yeah. Boom. And when he fell, he hit his head up against the concrete and he split his head open. Thought he was dead. They sent him to the they sent him to the doctor. By the time he came, he came back looking like Frankenstein for real. They had to cut his hair off and give him give him he had 15 staples in his head right there. That was my work. I'm just saying though. Yeah. <laughs> that was my work. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, that was my first time with him. Being in a ride, being in something scary, goddamn it, in job corps. It taught me shit, and it's survival of the fitness, man. I fought every time there was something jumping off a job call. I, I want, I want the end now. Yeah, did the fight keep going, or it was yeah. that the end of it? What? Oh like? yeah, a um, couple, couple more niggas ran out there and fought. They bumped heads like, 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 like um, armies do. Everybody collided together, goddamn man. After I took out niggas, got them niggas, and we ran their ass back out. They didn't want no action. Um, but that's how it was in job code. A ride could break out any time, shit. Um. I didn't been surrounded. I um, I used to um, me and my homeboy we used to walk and break into dorms when niggas was at school during the daytime in job code. When everybody got to go to their classes and and yeah. then shit, we'd sneak out back to the campus and break out from their lockers and shit. So um, 
they, they was trying to find who was doing the breaking in the dorm shit. They couldn't find them. See, one thing about the dorm, they got to leave the dorms over because anybody can come walk in there. But see, what they don't know, everybody that walk in there don't stay there. Yeah, facts. But if you get caught over in that motherfucker, these niggas know that you don't stay there, your ass is pop. Oh, yeah, you in oh, trouble. you in trouble. But anyway, we was in and out. You know what I mean? States, you know what I mean? My partner, we was in and out, we breaking in they shit. And I was down, down one time, they moved one of them niggas from over there, off the other side of the campus, over to our dorm, inside my room. And um, I never forget, man, I had this other nigga speakers and everything off inside my locker. And I opened that locker, and homeboy seen everything in here that they had been missing over there, on their side of campus. And so I had went over there to visit one weekend, and not knowing that this dude didn't tell them, I found out who be broken, breaking inside the lockers, breaking inside the goddamn me dorms when we gone. Right. He had told him. And my best friend Cedric had just came to job coach. You know, he had been there for about like three weeks. And um, I was going over there to visit on the other side of campus. And when I went inside they dorm, somebody, somebody, one of them bitch niggas got in on me. They said that nigga that be breaking into the dorm, he over there in such and such room right now. You know, next thing you know, I'm talking to my partner Sid and the door kicked open. It's about like nine niggas. And I'm talking about they wasn't trying to hear a motherfucking thing. Nigga, they came from my motherfucking ass, you hear me? Them niggas wasn't trying to hear shit. You know, right. they was like on some other. Yeah, nigga, you the one been breaking into our shit, nigga. Yeah, them niggas say you the one got my motherfucking shit. One nigga, one nigga, he from California, man. This nigga right here. And his attitude, the way he talked, this nigga scared a goddamn shit out of him. And he had a Jerry Carroll on his motherfucking head. Real black ass nigga. And he was like, yeah, nigga, you stole my shit, nigga. Them niggas talking every time he talked, that Jerry Carroll would jump, nigga. He said, I want my motherfucking shit. Yeah. I'm telling you, I want my motherfucking shit. Because they said, you the one guy. You Percy, ain't you? You Percy, huh? And then my best friend said he came out from the seat because he heard him in there arguing. She said, what's going on? They finna fight this nigga in there. And he said my best friend walked in from forward. When he walked in, he said, nigga, that's my boy Percy. Man, wait a minute. All this, oh, hell no, no. Ain't no, ain't no. They even telling my partner, man, what you mean, nigga? Well, this might be your own boy, but you stay on this side of the camera. That nigga been breaking in my shit over here. Yeah, he going off. Yeah, that nigga ain't trying to hear nothing. I was like, if somebody just calm him down, yeah. If somebody just calm that one down, shit, I got it made. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I be down so on. Um, I got put on trial, you know, cause, you know, back in job code, nigga, you know, you don't make it. You don't, it's just, you don't, you don't make it to court. Everything goes down right now. You understand me? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, how do I plead? I plead no content. So, you know, what does that mean? Nigga, you breaking our shit and you didn't. No content, man. I ain't. So, so that's telling them niggas that I did. So, nigga, cause nigga, uh, uh, nothing gonna tell you, hell, nah, I ain't breaking your shit. I know I broke in some of y'all shit, but I probably didn't break in your shit. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. That part. You know what I'm saying, me? But anyway, um, they came down to it that I had to fight Morris. Another saber two tiger. With one tooth missing in the front. Another saber tooth tiger, man. And Morris, man. I had to fight Maurice, man. Uh, before I could get out the door. Mm. Yeah, I, I always run into action, man. You know, some bullshit that I ain't got myself into. But I can handle it. So, Maurice, it is. I took flight on Maurice up in the hell. Beep, beep, beep. Beep. And I was mopping Maurice motherfucking ass up. But out of the blue, Maurice. Uh, had took a little wrestling course. Right. And Maurice grabbed me by my side. He put me in some kind of little hole. He bent me. He was bending me over like this, trying to wrestle. For some reason, I didn't think this shit was going to work because so I let the nigga get his bend on. You know? By the time you know it, then they had bent me up like a motherfucker goddamn me on. A banana, man. man. Yeah, nigga had bent me up in a, in a little old position, man. I'm thinking to myself, this shit ain't going to work. Then all of a sudden, man, I start losing my motherfucking breath. Man, it's hard for me to breathe. That nigga had me in a bad motherfucking hole. Them niggas had to get that nigga out. Man, I, he, he wouldn't let go because he knew he couldn't outpunch me. 
I had to tap out. Submission hole, on submission hole, y'all. Yeah, he had me in a submission hole. So my partner said, make the nigga get up off of me. I'm like, God damn, nigga, nigga, shit. I didn't feel nothing till the next morning. And I got up and I tried to move. I said, oh, oh fuck. And he had bit me so bad out of place, man, I couldn't even breathe in or nothing. I was like, oh, shit. Everything was hurt. And, and Mars, he did that. I swore to myself, I'm going to get that other tooth out that nigga mouth as soon as this motherfucking pain wore off. I'm going to go fight my car. I had him with the hands. I just can't let him grab me next time. I always thought like this. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. don't let him grab you next time. Yeah. Yeah, man, I, I want that tooth, though. Yeah. I want that tooth out that nigga mouth, man. I'm going to go get that tooth. I said, man, just watch this rat nigga sneaky. Yeah. This nigga know that bullshit. That nigga know that tap ass shit. He got some... Some UFC moves that, that before UFC came out. Before it even came. Yeah, his daddy taught him something. But anyway, um, I had a standoff with Morris one day, and um, right, I didn't get to get my action back. Yeah, you good. But I, but but me and my partner mopped up about four of his homeboys, about three on four. We had a three on four. Mm. Now one day, you know, my my friend Cedric told me, he said, man, don't go down that person. Man, leave that shit alone. Stay out this shit. Man, just just go you know, work out, swim, go do something there. I tell him, all right, man. And I lied. I went with my partner in me anyway. We had the three on four. It was three of us and it was four of them. And we walked in and, we, and they were some fighters and we were some fighters. Wasn't no easy, wasn't no easy work, no work. Everybody walked up and started taking yeah. out. Yeah. Shit, it was good, it was good as fuck. <laughs> That's what you call a good fight. You niggas don't know fight. nothing about a good fight. I'm talking a good fight. Everybody scratching. Yeah. She you know. And everybody got kicked out. <laughs> the same motherfucking night. Sent home. Terminated. That's the word they call it. But um, anyway, man, um, as far as going to the penitentiary to learn how to use these hands, man, uh, I learned from King Carleon, man. I, I, mean, I said King Carleon. Fuck King Carleon. Not for me. I learned from um, Big King Kong, man. King Kong silk, silk and silk, man. Silk with knife. And you know, I watched a lot of diggers that had moves in there and I just picked up on what they did and added it to my arsenal. I didn't give a damn if it was just a little piece of footwork or even just had little old turns. I need to learn how to do a turn or, right. or a step right. or a jab or a swing and a jab or whatever. I, I had to learn how to master everything I seen another nigga do. I be looking at the corner of my eye, and I go in my cell, and I practice this. You practice it until I learn. Yeah. Fight. But other than that, man, I had I always had the heart to fight. I I don't know nothing about it. they be talking about you know you let it go, let it down, and stop you no know, shit. I, I feel like Muhammad Ali, nigga. I'ma punch him until my brain dead, nigga. Yeah. Boys. I'm gonna punch to my brain deep. Understand me? Huh? But I don't, I, I'm not getting no more altercations. I ain't gonna lie, you niggas run up on me the wrong way. I'm not doing no talking, no fighting. Yeah. I'm scared. I'm too old to fight now. I can just talk about it. I'm too old to fight. You can probably get me now. Sight, I lied, motherfucker. Run your bitch ass up if you want to, goddamn me. Find out I'm still the old man with the cold hand. Balls, nigga. Yeah.